so color blindness um, can be congenital color blindness can be acquired color okay so colors cones are due to uh, cones are responsible for color maximum cones are in the fovea of the retina and rods are everywhere in the retina except fovea maximum rods are present in periphovea 120 million rods and 6 million cones are there and there are three types of cones in the retina red green blue and vibgyor i always say vibgyor is increasing wavelength so red is the longest wavelength the so long cones are red medium cones are green small cones are blue and three types of color blindness are there red green and blue color blindness and the color blindness can be congenital color blindness can be acquired color blindness the question was between these two congenital and acquired so congenital is due to dystrophy of the cones cones are dystrophies inherited cause and mostly they are x link recessive x link recessive mostly seen in special patients young males and most of the color blindness green color blindness the red green color blindness most common is dystonopia green color blindness in congenital cause acquired cause may be because of optic nerve disorder or macular disorders it is mostly it is there is no genetic linkage it is acquired cause acquired optic nerve macular disorder and mostly there are blue color blindness now congenital color blind they don't know the colors since their birth that is why they don't realize the change in the color because since birth they are having color blindness now acquired they know the colors so if they get a acquired color blindness the color perception will change so these are points let us see so males are more affected in congenital that is a true statement patients are not aware of the wrong color in congenital that is a true statement they don't know because they have been taught like that since birth they don't know what is color because congenital color blindness are there they are bilateral and symmetrical and yes there is a inheritance pattern so that is a wrong uh, statement but the correct answer over here is d because there is a x link recessive pattern of color blindness so d is a incorrect statement and the and the correct answer of this because answer question is except which of the following is not true for the patient of csr now csr is a important topic central cis retinopathy it is also seen in young uh, males but central vision of the retina is involvement if there is a central involvement the patient will have central vision loss not peripheral vision loss so this is this is the answer because this is our incorrect statement usually it responds on its own but if it doesn't respond you can close the outer barrier by photodynamic therapy so central cis retinopathy again seen in young male with the type a personality under stress or taking steroids steroid is a risk factor for example he is a intern or married male okay he comes with central vision loss with metamorphosia metamorphosia is distorted vision so central macular problem macular problem will lead to metamorphosia so there is a central vision loss metamorphosia seen on ancillary grade chart ocd it's a type of exudative detachment because there is a outer barrier this is a ocd this is a retinal pigment epithelium outer barrier is broken down and choroid fluid is coming in the subretinal space that's why is the example of a exudative detachment can be detected on oct or angiography the dye is putting in the arm retina time is 11 seconds the dye is coming into the choroid vessels also the dye will pool in the subretinal space and central usually there is hypofluorescence here will be central hyperfluorescence like a smoke is rising ink blot appearance on angiography so for if it uh, resolves on its own in 3 months that is okay otherwise photodynamic therapy is done photodynamic therapy is done with 689 nanometer 689 nanometers uh, wavelength vertiporphyrin vertiporphyrin drug is used and the outer barrier is broke uh, is closed by development of oxygen free radicals that closes the barrier after 3 months steroids accentuate the disease and it is a type of exudative detachment so a is the right answer over here because it is a incorrect statement so answer is a from what distance a patient of 66 vision 66 vision can see the 618 letter on which chart snell and chart that's the most common chart for visual acuity measurement so snell and chart uh, see snell and chart the numerator is the distance from where the patient is standing and denominator is from where the normal person can see that letter so 6 by 60 can be seen by a normal individual from 60 meters the question is if the patient is 66 that is a normal he can see the 618 letter from 18 meters 636 can see the 
a normal person can see the 636 letter from 36 meters and so on. So a 66 patient can see the 618 letters from 18 meters. Investigation. This is an ultrasound B scan. It's an objective test. This is anterior. This is the posterior part of the eye. So it is usually done in those conditions with, where we have a media opacity. If light is not reaching the retina due to any media opacity like vitreous hemorrhage, like dense cataract, corneal opacity, light is not reaching the retina. So how to see the posterior segment evaluation? Posterior segment evaluation in cases of media opacities, ultrasound B scan is used. So see in these uh, options which of these have media opacities. Retina detachment, retina detachment can be seen by indirect ophthalmoscopy. But if it is associated with vitreous hemorrhage, which is a media opacity, ultrasound B scan is indicated. Posterior segment evaluation in case of media, that is that is the ultrasound uh, B scan used for. To identify the type of optic atrophy, no. Optic atrophy, optic disc evaluation is by slit line biomicroscopy or direct ophthalmoscopy. Gold standard is slit line biomicroscopy because that's a binocular test. That is clinical evaluation. To confirm the ocular mass is retinoblastoma tumor? Yes. Why? Because it can pick up calcification. To confirm, seeing by indirect ophthalmoscopy, but to confirm calcification is an important point in retinoblastoma. So that is also an indication of ultrasound B scan. So C is the answer because it is not used for identifying optic atrophy. That is a clinical evaluation. First, regarding the following condition. Now, this is a port wine stain, a Sturge Weber syndrome. Sturge Weber syndrome. Now, it is not common than the capillary hemangioma. Capillary hemangioma is more common, so that's the answer because what the question was, all are two except. This is not, this is false statement. Yes, it is associated with the increased episcopal venous pressure. Sturge Weber syndrome, thyroid eye disease, and keratico cavernous fistula. These three conditions have increased intraocular pressure, increased episcleral venous pressure, which can lead to secondary intraocular pressure. So glaucoma can also be associated with all the three. And yes, there is diffuse choroidal hemangioma. Tomato ketchup appearance is seen. Splash tomato blood thunder appearance seen in central lateral venous occlusion. Tomato ketchup appearance seen in diffuse choroidal hemangioma that is seen in Sturge Weber syndrome. Next is also factual. Which vitamin deficiency deficiency causes angular blepharoconjunctivitis? This is a repeat question of one of the old questions. Vitamin B2 is the answer. Vitamin A deficiency causes zero ophthalmia. Everyone must be knowing this. And the uh, WHO classification is also important. This was the question. Vitamin B6 deficiency causes gyrate. That's why the treatment is also given vitamin B6. Vitamin C deficiency, ascorbate deficiency, subconjunctival hemorrhage is given. And D, not so common but associated with proptosis of eyes. Okay, a person with right side lateral rectus palsy, right side LR palsy means right six nerve palsy, right side LR is not working. So Sherrington Lord told us that MR muscle is antagonist, it will work more. So eye of the patient will go towards like this. What is which tropia is this? This is right esotropia. The question is. Of course, the patient will have diplopia, binocular diplopia, only horizontal diplopia. Will not have horizontal diplopia in looking in this direction. So, see, when he looks in the left side, what happens when he looks levo version? This eye is already on the left. This will also go in the left. Both eyes are parallel to each other. He will not have diplopia looking left. And maximum diplopia, I always say just choose the muscle. Uh, maximum diplopia is on the looking right because just choose the muscle, palsy. If right LR is working on the right side, maximum diplopia is also on the right side. There is no diplopia on looking left on levo version. That's the answer. Following appearance due to which organism? Now first identify what is it? This is bitot spot. There is a foamy appearance of bitot spot. Bitot spot is due to vitamin A deficiency. Again vitamin. Vitamin A deficiency that is bitot spot comes in which uh, stage of WHO? classification X1B. Mostly site is temporal, conjunctiva. The question is the foamy appearance due to corny bacterium cirrhosis. It does not cause vision loss. Bitot spot does not cause vision loss. And treatment also you should know. <clears throat> this is very common picture to be asked. This is iris pigments on the lens capsule. Voschius ring. Seen in blunt trauma. 
iris momentarily compressed against the anterior surface of the lens that is causing the pigments from the pupil margin not from the periphery of the iris and that's why the pattern corresponds to the size of the myosed pupil so it comes from the pupil margin not periphery of the iris watch your ring big question a six month old child brought with the parents complaining of big eyes big look looking right eye right eye is big child has constant watering with closure of eyes or exposure what is this photophobia watering big eyes this has to be congenital glaucoma because they have also confirmed the intraocular pressure is very high 34 mm this is congenital glaucoma entry chamber is also deep angle surgery has to be done see what is the mechanism of congenital glaucoma trabecular dysgenesis because of what trabecular dysgenesis there is a membrane which is blocking the anterior chamber the membrane is known as barkens membrane barkens membrane is blocking the anterior chamber that is not allowing the aqueous to go out that's why the pressure is increasing because aqueous cannot go out so the treatment is cutting of the barkens membrane that is goniotomy that is the surgery of choice in congenital glaucoma that is the management of choice medical management usually does not work but to see the angle you need gonioscopes because gonioscope is a technique by which you see the angle gonioscope is of two types direct gonioscope and indirect gonioscope indirect gonioscope contain mirrors indirect gonioscope contain mirrors so whenever you stand in front of mirror the light is 180 degree reflected so if you want to see superior angle you will keep the mirror below you see what do you see temporal angle you see the mirror nasal during surgery do you want to see the opposite side or you want to see directly you want to see directly so direct gonioscopes are used during angle surgeries so question is which of the following the only one statement can be there uh, which of the following is a direct gonioscope coep is a direct gonioscope goldman poston zeiss are examples of indirect gonioscope that was the answer during angle surgeries direct gonioscopes are used all right that's the 10 questions thank you for listening don't waste much time just see once not more than 10 15 minutes for this thank you very much thanks for listening